Alright, so before we talk about the Mugen Train arc, let's take a break. This is the segue for the Rehabilitation arc. So I'm not sure if it came as a surprise to anybody else, but it certainly came as a surprise for me that there was such a thing as a Rehabilitation arc. And in the case of Demon Slayer, it is a total of 9 chapters. To put this into perspective, when our heroes spent some time in the Fuji household to rest, there was over 2 chapters, and they didn't even take up all of the pages of those two chapters. And when it comes to the final selection arc that built up the whole story, that was a total of nine chapters. So the same amount as the rehabilitation arc. So what the hell is going on here that warrants the same amount of chapters and time as the hook and catch of the series? Well, I'll tell you. Just like how the first arc of the series is called the final selection arc, but the beginning of it has nothing to do with the final selection, so too does the rehabilitation arc with nothing that has to do with getting better. The arc begins with deciding the fates of Tanjiro and his sister. So apparently what our OG Demon Slayer guy did was a big no-no. Every Demon Slayer and their mom is wondering why the hell was this guy traveling around with a demon and why hasn't he killed her yet? And when you think about that too, that makes a lot of sense. Like yeah, I get it. I think Nezuko is kawaii and all, but why does our OG and Teach get to decide that's okay? I think everyone like me just assumed that it was okay and didn't really give it a second thought. But what doesn't make sense is that if it wasn't okay, then why wasn't Tani informed about this? Did Uro Kodakai tell him before he left on his first mission that he should never tell anyone about this? Tani seems kind of in the dark in all these details. And it's only when Bossman shows up and tells everybody that it's cool that this matter gets resolved. Why didn't he send a crow and tell Tani that it was cool before? Why didn't he tell all of the Hashira, the baddest of the baddest of the Demon Slayer corpse ever, about this predicament? Well, for whatever reason that he didn't, it's fortunate that they decided to show up right before Tanjiro's sister was killed right in front of him. Anywho, Tani gets dragged away to the Butterfly Mansion, and it's here that he finally rests up and trains. Him, Zenetsu, and Inosuke are badly injured, and they spend a lot of time each day getting massages, playing a cups game, and playing tag with little girls. Zenetsu displays his impure intentions, which I find to be hilarious. And despite such seemingly easy tasks, no one is able to defeat Kanao. Kanao also happens to be someone that became a demon slayer at the same time as them, so this gap in ability confuses them, and confuses me. This leads to our heroes finding the things that they were missing. Total concentration breathing, 24-7. Total concentration breathing is focused breathing for building in order to improve your body and your mind. Your body will get physically stronger and your mind will become more resilient. It will also allow you to become a man of focus, a man like John Wick. Our boy's time recovering and training is a lot of fun and if you're a big fan of Zenetsu like me, then you're gonna love all of his moments here. Alright, so now let's talk about trains. What is a Mugen train anyway? Is it just a normal fucking train? Why is it called Mugen? Oh, Mugen means infinity. So it's the infinity train. Is there something special about the name? Is there something special in the story? Well, no. Well, not really. Look, if I thought there was something special about it, I would tell you. But more about the train, there is a whole arc revolving around this train. Yeah. A whole fucking arc. No, even better, a whole fucking movie involving a train. A train called the Infinity Train that's not special in any way. I just want to make that crystal clear. What is special is what happens on the train, of course. We have demons putting passengers asleep in order for demons to consume them, and we have one of the coolest demon slayers aboard, Rengoku. So Rengoku is one of the most badassiest guys in Demon Slayer ever. He looks cool, he's got a positive demeanor, and he's got Goku in his name. What more can you ask for? He's definitely a character that you will want to see a lot of too. However, they kill him off here. Yeah, they kill this cool and interesting character that you would just love to learn more about. Rengoku's death is one of the most odd decisions made in Demon Slayer for me. Like as I said before, He's got a lot of things going on for him. He's really engaging. He's also the connection with our main character that's just right for character development. Tanjiro learning the fire dance breathing from his father and Rengoku being the flame Hashira is the best lead that he's got for learning more about it. And Rengoku could have been that guy that informed him about this stuff or maybe even been doing research about it. But instead, the creator of the story just 
kills him, and then just pushes that responsibility of all that cool stuff over to his father. Back to training, though, there are a lot of interesting things going on revolving around the main demon. This demon was actually tasked by Muzan to hunt down Tanjiro, and despite all of the bloodshed revolving around that, they decide not to do the same for their victims. Instead, this demon chooses to place her victims into dreams that they wouldn't want to wake up from. It is fully capable of placing its victims into nightmares, but it chooses not to do so, unless it has to. It's a very strange sense of mercy that this demon has, but it allows us to gain some insights of our characters. Anosuke has a funny dream with him as a leader with his followers. Zenitsu has a funny dream with him roaming around with Nezuko just frolicking around. And Tantra has a sad dream where he joins together with his family again. Tanjiro's dream is about the rejection of fantasy over reality. Tani would of course love to stay in this dream. Hell, he's crying tears of joy. He's got everything he's wanted, but he can't stay. This is a lot like with Superman and his dream with his son. He of course would have loved to stay in such a world, but it isn't real. His son wasn't real. Tanjiro's family here isn't real. He's on the train, the Mugen train, and he's under attack. He regrettably has to leave. This shows that his training has not gone to waste. He's trained his mind and his body to be totally concentrated on the task of being a demon slayer. And by this act of rejecting happiness for cruel reality, he's demonstrated that he is totally committed. Also, where's Tanjiro's dad? Why isn't he here in this dream? Well, he is in the dream for like a second, but you know what I mean. It's not like his dad couldn't be here all happy and shit too. Tanjiro has clearly shown that he cares a lot about his family, so in the off chance that he has a dream to reconnect with his family, he just doesn't want to see his dad as much as his other family members. I call bullshit on that. Tanjiro's dad should have been here. It's a freaking dream. It doesn't need to make sense. And in fact, it doesn't make sense at all in the beginning of Tanjiro anyway, and he just kind of brushes over that too. We couldn't just brush over the fact that his dad died and be like, oh, I thought I must have, I must have been confused. Now onto things not making sense. For example, there's these so-called manifestations of Tanjiro's kindness. They are these cute little warm guys in Tanjiro's dream that I just fucking love, and they seemingly just exist. Again, this is never really explained. Tanjiro clearly didn't think them up in his dream. They just came into being somehow. They guide a baddie human to our boy's spiritual core, the thing that basically acts like the soul of the body, and this baddie human is so overwhelmed by how kind and cute these sprites are that he begins to cry. Basically, Tanjiro is the light within the darkness, the good, kind, and well-spirited hero within a very dark world. Like Goku from Dragon Ball, or Gon from Hunter x Hunter, or Naruto from Naruto. Or our hero, of course, frees him from their slumber, and how you ask? Well, he cuts himself out his neck. He's then on top of the train to face the big baddie dream demon Enmu. Also, remember how I said that there was nothing special about this train? Well, guess what? I freaking lied! There actually is something special about this train, and that is, is that this demon fuses his body with it. So basically, Tani has to fight the whole fucking train, but unlike Cuphead, it's not just going to have its heart out for you all out in the open so you can kill it. Any normal person would say that Tanjiro is fucked, but guess what? Tanjiro's friends are awake, thanks to Nezuko waking them up off screen, and now they're going to fight together. Against a train! So they then fight the demon's neck on the train and kill it. Everything seems like it's going to be okay, but then uh, another demon shows up, and uh, he kills from Goku. Oh. Uh. Okay. As I said, the death of Rengoku is very odd. It's all because it felt like a lot of cool stuff was being set up for him, and it's all because another demon just shows up at the end, to, out of nowhere, to fight and kill him. And that demon then runs off, and we're left with the mourning of our hero. Rengoku, in many ways, is the mere image to Tanjiro. Now... Now that I've said that, I feel like I can say that about pretty much all the characters of Demon Slayer, but with Rengoku, I feel like he is the best example. Both are Demon Slayers, with one up and coming while the other is a master. They both can use a fire elemental style of breathing. They both are generally kind-natured and seemingly paragons of virtue. They desire to protect those that are weaker than themselves, and they both have a significant sibling in their life that they aim to do good by. In many ways, Tanjiro and Rengoku are the same character. 
and I think that's why he was killed off. Now, I'm not saying that he was killed off because having pretty much the same character Ram would be distracting or redundant for the story. I actually think that if Rengoku actually did stick around, that it would be a benefit to the story. The reason that I think that Rengoku was killed off was to act as a sacrificial lamb for Tanjiro. The demon that Rengoku faced was an upper rank demon. Upper rank 3 to be precise. Of all the demons in Demon Slayer, there are 12 baddies that are hand selected. There is a lower rank composing of 6 demons and an upper rank composing of another 6 demons that are the worst of the worst. Collectively, they are called the 12 Kazuki. The lower rank demons are formidable but defeatable. Rengoku was able to kill Enmu, and Giyu was able to kill Rui, but when it comes to the upper rank of the Kazuki, they are a far greater challenge. They are not easily defeated. They are the strongest demons in the world. There are only three other demons in regards to the strengths above rank number three. There is rank number two, rank number one, and of course the strongest demon of them all, Muzan. The upper rank of the Kazuki are indicative of the strength that is possessed by the Demon King himself, as no matter how strong they can even become, Muzan will always be stronger. The death of Rengoku is a hard hit reality for Tanjiro. The fourth strongest demon in the world killed someone that Tanjiro regarded to be of an ability way superior than his. Tanjiro has learned a lot, but by seeing this, he's realized that he's not even close enough to avenging his family and saving his sister. He is forced to face reality which is a big theme in the Mugen train arc, rejecting fantasy and accepting reality. With the death of Rengoku, Tanjiro is forced to reject the fantasy that he is competent enough to defeat Muzan, and he is faced with the reality that he has a lot more to learn. So yeah, Rengoku's death has a lot of significance to it. My only problem with it is that it just happens way too early. Like for example, we could have had maybe like another arc or two, we could have had like a MacGuffin plot device where perhaps that whole fire dance thing that Tanjiro is talking about, where Goku overhears it and he's like, wait a minute, I've this is like an ancient mystery, we gotta go solve this, they have to go to a faraway land and they gotta go, go discover the mystery, and while they're going to do this, the number ranked three demon, he hears about this and he's like, man, I gotta stop these guys or I gotta figure out what they're doing, or maybe they go into his territory where he's at, and that's where they learn the mystery. And that's when Rengoku confronts him, and when they're having this long journey, this kind of bonding moment, this brother-to-brother -brother kind of thing going on, that's when Rengoku gets killed off. I feel like that would have been a much better fulfilling and better conclusion for the story of Rengoku, but what we got is still good too. Maybe I'm just being a nitpicky asshole. Again, I'm a professed manga bra, but the movie of the events is a sight to see. After hearing so many good things about it, and after hearing how popular it was, I finally checked it out with my buds, and uh, I fucking loved it. If you haven't already seen it, I recommend that you check it out. Alright, so now that after spent- Alright, so now that we spent some time on a train, let's all go do something more exciting, or perhaps you could say, more entertaining.